Hi Village, it's your coach Mo back with a new video. Today's topic is don't limit your vision to your situation. So I thought about this topic because I hear a lot being a business coach and a parenting coach that people are like, oh I can't start my business because I'm broke or like right now during the pandemic people lost their jobs, they're unsure about where their job or their career is going to be but it's the best time to start. It don't cost anything to dream. It don't cost anything to start your social media. It don't cost anything to tell people what you do. So I always limit that, tell people don't limit it to your situation because your situation don't determine where your business can be or go. Um, a lot of people have this misconception of, oh, to start a business, you need a lot of money to start. It costs this, this, this. You have to have a website. None of that is true. Those are myths. So I wanted to help you guys understand that you can start a business no matter what situation you're in. It don't cost you to dream. Dreaming is free. Social media is free. It don't cost to be on Facebook. It don't cost to be on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, TikTok, none of that. Those are free apps. Why aren't you using that to your advantage? Making videos on YouTube is free and you could possibly get paid to do it. So think outside the box when it comes to creating or building a business. You can create a business plan for free. You can Google everything you need to include in a business plan to get started. You can Google a lot of different resources, templates, how to build your email list. There's so much free content out there, especially like on YouTube. <laughs> Hello. Um, Pinterest, they have a lot of templates and things like that. There's a lot of blogs that will teach you how to build things. I have about 130 videos on my YouTube channel that teaches people free ways to do a lot of stuff. I have a video about like how to get started with no money, um, what you need to get started. Most of the content that I build around building businesses or starting your business is free. I always give you free stuff because a lot of people use that as an excuse. I don't have the money to do it. How do you know how much money you need to get started? Even if you have a product based business, you can be smart and pre-sale. Those people that are buying via pre-sale orders, that can fund your first order of shipment. You won't see any profit that way for a while, but you will get to start. So you have to think outside the box when it comes to starting a business. If you really want it, you'll figure it out, period. I always say hashtag team no excuse. <laughs> I started with financial aid from school about 11 years ago when I started my first business, which was an online plus size boutique. I used the $1,000 out of my financial aid and bought my inventory, made about two, three times that much back within the first two, three weeks of launching my business. My website was through Big Cartel. It was only $10 a month. Upload everything, the templates, everything was there. I started with little to no money and then I didn't have to come out of pocket for it. That was free federal. <laughs> loans from the government for my uh, Pell Grants. So I always tell people no excuse. You can figure it out. I figured it out. I wanted to start a business. I was a single mom. My son wasn't even, well I started it right before he turned one years old and now he's getting ready to be 12. So I've been a business owner for over 11 years um, with a fashion business now I'm getting ready to launch another business um, within the fashion business um, because I did close my boutique about two years ago when I started my coaching business, a little after I started the coaching business um, because it was a lot. It was a lot managing both and I had a It Works business at the same time. So it was three businesses at once. But now that I know how to do time management, work-life balance, I'm like, okay, I can relaunch my fashion business, but I have a line of lipsticks <laughs> so I love lipsticks lip gloss all that so I started a new line of that so that's gonna be coming soon um, but you can start a business with no money and never think about your situation because if it's something that's your purpose God will make a way he will give you the funding 
So even when he God told me to quit my job last year and go full time in my business, of course I worried about how I'm gonna pay bills, guaranteed money, finances. He sent me clients. He sent me uh, so much like <laughs> financial blessings, including this year when God told me to go back to work. And I'm like, God, really? Like, am I going? I'm going back to work. Um, after you told me to leave my job, I was uh, self-employed for about eight months before he sent me back to work. And then when I went back to work, I got promoted. He sent me over $20,000 in financial blessings this year, just from unexpected stuff. I never expected settlements. I forgot I was included in settlements from years ago and getting settlement checks and stuff like that. I wasn't expecting any of that. And it hit right after the pandemic started and we went to work from home and I'm like, oh my gosh. Thank you, God. And then he sent me clients still. <laughs> this pandemic have elevated my business and put me in a position where I have that financial freedom that I always wanted and able to help people give back, donate to organizations to help people in need. But he makes a way. So we can't rely on us in our situation. We just have to have faith in God. And God has definitely built my faith over the last few years um with when i started my business and then seeing the transformations that i'm getting people um in their life building fam bringing families back together building those bond with parents loving their kids again and people starting a business and not have to be stressed out because they have the step-by-step -step way of um building a business without going through a lot of the stuff i had to go through and learn with having multiple business in different industries also, just because you don't have the money to invest don't mean you can't start working on building the plan. So you can start with, as I mentioned before, building your social media, starting to get uh, traction, starting to find, figure out who your ideal client is. You can start doing Q and A's, question of the day, just to fish and see if people would want to buy what you're offering. You can start building followers. You can start just talking to people about it and see what interest they have, see what suggestions they have. If they ask you or inquire about things, you can start a wait list. You can start an email list to build that hype. Like me, before I started selling clothes, I used to build the hype by doing quotes, fashion quotes of the day, and I do um, fashion inspiration of the day. So I use these third-party apps, build and put together outfits, and post them. So people like that. So I always, I still do that to this day after <laughs> 11 years with my business page or with my fashion page. I manage multiple social media platforms because I have a separate one for my fashion, separate one for my coaching business. Um, I no longer have a personal page on Instagram because the third page will be too much to manage. But um, I started talking to people about what do you want to see? Accessories, makeup, more clothes. People started inquiring. Then I started getting offers for being an influencer, um, different things like that. So you always need to start talking. Um, I used to, people used to laugh at me because last year I drove for um, Lyft and Uber um, when I was self-employed and I did it as a way of networking. So people always got in the car and they were like, Oh, do you do this full time? I'm like, no, here's my card. Actually, I'm a, a parenting and business life coach. And they're always like, oh my gosh, it must be faith that I'm meeting you. I need your car. Like, how do I sign up? That's how I got a lot of clients, <laughs> just by talking to them about what I did. I pretty much had a breakthrough call session in the car while I'm taking them to their destination and just talk to them about my business. I talk to at least 30 people a day about my business. If you don't tell people what you do, and if you don't show it on social media, how do they know? <laughs> that could be your ideal client waiting for you to show up because they need help and they know God is drawing them to you and you're sitting here being scared, worried about money when a lot of the stuff is free. You can use Canva, I use Buffer to schedule out my posts. I use YouTube, I use uh, record videos and post them. Instagram, I use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is where I get a lot of podcasts, um, guest podcasts, speaking engagements, all that from LinkedIn. I let people know I'm available for speaking and then they see the content that I post 
And they're like, hey, they reach out to me. I don't even reach out to anybody. They reach out to me like, hey, I would like for you to be a guest. I love what you do. I've been watching you for this long. You just have to let people know you're open to it. You can't shut down just because of your situation. You have to show up. Nobody is going to know what you do if you don't tell them. Period. Don't worry about where the money comes from. If it's God's purpose, he will provide for you. Also, your situation don't stop your purpose. You have to know that when God puts something in you and you know it's your purpose, when it keeps nagging you, you can't stop thinking about it, you dream about it, you just feel so emotionally tied to that one thing. Like That's when I knew I was a, a life coach. I always had people drawn to me for help, for advice. I was always that resourceful friend, talking people off the ledge, motivating them, inspiring them. And they always be like, you inspire me. And one day I just like, ever since I was about 13, I had this feeling. I said, oh, I'm going to be a therapist or I'm going to be a counselor or I'm going to be a social worker. Then I went to school for psychology. I got a psychology degree. Then I went to grad school for research psychology. And something didn't sit right with me while I was in grad school back in 2016. So I left grad school. Um, that's when I found out about life coaching and that's when I started my business. So it was a little over three. I didn't actually officially start the business. I started doing all the research. I built out almost a year worth of content before I actually jumped out and started the business and became official. So it was so weird. I followed other life coaches on YouTube, watched a lot of videos. I watched um, a lot of people on social media follow people in different groups because that's what I knew and God put on my heart to be a life coach. I knew once I was in grad school doing research psychology, I started researching it because that's my thing. <laughs> when you become a research psychology major, I did like a whole semester of grad school doing all this researching different parts of psychology and it mentioned life coach and that's when I dug into it like this is it. This is what I want to do. So now back in grad school again, I waited two and a half years uh, after starting my business to go and do, um, get a major in psychology again, but with emphasis in life coaching. Who would have known that that was a major? <laughs> God led me to that too. And that was when I was self-employed last year. And before he told me to go back to work, he told me to go to school. And then I've started researching schools like what major would I do I don't want to be a research psychology major anymore came across Grand Canyon University and they had the major I'm gonna have my master's degree I have three classes left right now I'm on a two-week break from school but I have three classes left to graduate with a master's degree in psychology so I'll be a psychological life coach like that is crazy that God put that in my like plan I didn't know I didn't think I gave up on grad school I didn't think I was going back to finish my master's degree but God dreamed about it it would not get off my heart like it just kept nagging me like I need to finish I don't like starting stuff and not finishing anything it took me forever to finish my bachelor's degree I think I was in school about 11 years <laughs> I would go a year be off a year go a year take two years I'll go back till I finally said I'm gonna stick to it I'm gonna finish so I did that this time with grad school I didn't take a break for 13 months so last week was the first time I said okay I'm gonna take a break um, even though down to my last three classes um, I was just like only 24 weeks left of school but I was like I can't do it because I went every semester never took a break for 13 months straight so my counselor was like just take a quick break for three weeks and you go back in October. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. But I'm grinding, grinding, grinding in my business because while I was in grad school, I didn't take a lot of clients. I didn't need the money, um, but I did have my old clients still on my roster that did re-sign up for new programs that I did launch. I would only take five clients a month, so I had a waiting list. So I have people that's ready to start with me in October. So I'm getting those people ready and launching different things until I go back to school so I can have everything ready. But I'm not letting, like, oh, um, I don't have the money for this because that's not true. I paid my website up for a year. 
Um, I would just like pay stuff in advance, pay my rent only four times a year, just every three months. Um, but that's how I set myself up to be able to still be comfortable financially, even when I wasn't working. Um, but just always keep the faith that God will provide for you. Don't worry about how much things cost. Don't worry about your situation because you're letting your situation limit your blessing. It's blocking your blessing and your purpose. People are waiting for you. People need to hear what you have to say. People need the services and programs and um, things like that that you have to offer, the products. Do it. It's free to create an ebook. Like my first project was a product was an ebook. I built the ebook free on canvas. Like on Canva. It was free <laughs> and I sold it for $7 per ebook. Why, what are you waiting for? I started my icebreaker cards a few years ago. Now I have five, five editions. It was created, free, to, free to create it and I pre-sold it. <laughs> so I didn't come out of pocket ever. Even right now when I sell them, I don't have a whole big inventory. I might have a few on hand but I don't keep a big inventory of those products. They buy, I order, and it's drop ship. I order it and it gets shipped to them. Simple as that. I don't have to do all the work. Don't make it hard for yourself. Don't stress yourself out. So that's all I have for you today. <laughs> and until next time, Coach Mo out.